Hey, it's Chris, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about iOS 13, more specifically, some settings within iOS 13 that you might wanna tweak. Because more than likely, your phone has now updated to iOS 13, maybe you just got a brand new iPhone and it came preloaded. And there's some new features that you wanna take as much advantage of as possible by tweaking some settings and some old things, some old features that you also wanna let go of and say bye-bye to. So that's what this video is all about. By the way, I made a similar video for watchOS 6 settings that you might wanna change. And I'll link that up right here or down in the description so you can check it out. Make sure all your Apple stuff's all up to date. If you wanna see a macOS Catalina settings video when that comes out any day now, let me know. And same thing for iPad, let me know. The first thing that I wanna mention is you don't have to do shake to undo anymore in iOS 13. You can, it's still there. You know what I'm talking about? Like you made a mistake with something and you had to shake your iPhone, shake it to undo whatever it was that you did that you didn't want done. There's actually two new ways that you can undo something. I guess this is sort of like a tips video at the same time as a settings video. So now you can, there's a lot to remember here. You can double tap with three fingers, double tap with triple fingers uh, to undo something, or you can swipe left with three fingers. <laughs> I'm serious, there's a lot to remember now. That's the thing, the operating system is getting so old now, and when there's new features and you get used to something, there's a lot to remember. That's why a video like this is helpful. So to turn this off, you go settings, accessibility, touch, and then you toggle the shake to undo. Now you could always turn it off, I'm pretty sure. That's always been an option, but the difference now is that you have some viable alternatives. So do yourself a favor and turn it off. Oh, here's a big one for you guys. Did you know that in iOS 13, you can now silence calls from unknown numbers? So in other words, if somebody doesn't appear in your contact list, you can send all of those calls straight to voicemail. Of course, for them, it's gonna ring the normal amount of time. So they're not gonna know they're getting snubbed necessarily, but they'll be able to just leave you a voicemail. Now this is perfect if you're getting a ton of spam calls and you don't wanna pay like a couple bucks a month or whatever it is for some service to help screen those out for you, right? You shouldn't have to. Well, now you can do this instead. So this is found in settings, phone, and silence unknown callers. Now, by the way, this isn't on by default. So you actually have to go in and turn this on. And it doesn't just affect unknown numbers, like unknown caller, when you see that on the caller ID, it's anybody that's not in your contact list. So the downside might be that maybe somebody from your kid's school or somebody at work or someone you need to have a meeting with or something calls and they're not in your contact list because this is a new number to you or you haven't bothered to put them in. The downside is you're gonna miss that initial call, but you're really not gonna be missing out on anything truly here because all you're doing is just screening people. And if it's somebody worthwhile, then they'll leave you a voicemail and you get right back to them. This is a pretty cool feature. I'm definitely turning this on. Here's something that's really important. I think you guys really need to perk up and listen to what I'm about to say. So in iOS 13, you can now strip out the information related to the location of where you took a photo, the GPS coordinates, when you share a photo. Now, you don't wanna turn off uh, where you took a photo in the camera settings app, right? Because that's really useful. There's so many times when I've wanted to know where a photo was or like track it down and just asking Siri for whatever reason wouldn't bring it up and I had to look on a map and I could like find whatever photos I was after like pretty quickly. So you don't wanna turn that off. But what you can do is when you share a photo, you can have it strip out all the location data, which is very useful because you don't need somebody like knowing where you live, for instance, some stranger on the internet, right? So to do this, launch photos, select an image, tap on share, and it'll tell you like one image selected or whatever, tap on options, and then uncheck location, and you're good to go. Now you can post it to Twitter or whatever. The one thing is though, you're gonna have to do this every single time that you share a photo and you want it to be more private in terms of your geolocation. Safari in iOS 13 is pretty awesome. So you know that little AA icon up in the top left with iOS 13? If you click on it, it can now do a lot more than just show you reader mode where it strips out all the images and ads and whatever and just shows you the text. You can request a desktop version. Of course, you can change like the font size and everything. You can hide the toolbar altogether if you want like a full screen Safari experience, which is pretty awesome. But there's also some more options there. So when you're in that AA icon, you've tapped on it, you could go ahead and tap on website settings to pull up some cool stuff. 
So here you can say always request the desktop version of a site, which is probably handy in certain situations. And you can say always request reader mode as well. One place where this is gonna be super useful is if you go to Google and it's always asking you for your location permission, you can either permanently say yes or no to that. So if that's been bugging you, you're welcome. This one goes out to everybody who's an Apple Music user. I've actually been getting questions about this on Twitter and elsewhere. So the now playing screen in Apple Music has been redesigned. And overall, I think it's better. Like things aren't hidden behind a scrolling menu anymore. But if you're like, where's the shuffle and repeat button, you're not alone. So what you need to do is go to the up next section and then you'll find those there. And then problem solved. So any menu on repeat or shuffle, can't go wrong. One thing I'm really enjoying in iOS 13 is the ability to autofill passwords when I get to a screen where I need to log in. Now, previously, it's really easy to do this with iCloud Keychain, but I don't use that. I use 1Password, and if you use something else like Dashlane or something, then the ability to autofill stuff from your password manager of choice is really awesome, really big deal. And by the way, you can also have the option to use iCloud Keychain and 1Password or Dashlane or whatever at the same time. It doesn't have to be either or or one or the other. So, settings passwords and accounts, and autofill passwords. That's where you're gonna be able to manage which apps show up when you get to a login screen and you wanna log in really easily. By the time you combine this with Face ID, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, silly, cool process. So in iOS 13, we have dark mode now. And actually, as you're setting up your new iPhone, maybe you enabled dark mode already. But here's the thing, there's some dark mode settings that you can play around with. Number one, you can change it so that it comes on automatically, kind of like Do Not Disturb, how you can have that happen automatically depending on like the time of day or sunrise or sunset. You can do similar things with dark mode. So to mess around with this, you go to Settings and Display and Brightness, and you'll see it right at the top there. You can do light mode, dark mode, or automatic, or custom if you want to do something really crazy on your own schedule for whatever reason. Now, there are actually some benefits here, aside from just the aesthetics. Like maybe you just prefer the dark mode, but let's say you have an iPhone that has an OLED screen in it. Well, when there's a black that shows up on the screen, with OLED, it actually turns off those pixels. And you might actually end up with some better battery life, for instance, a boost to your battery life. Like who's gonna complain about that? I'm certainly not. And for me, one of the reasons I like to do that automatic shift from light mode to dark mode is just for the variety because I can definitely get bored pretty easily with how my iPhone's looking. And so just to be able to see the wallpaper change, if nothing else, like it's kind of a welcome change, I think. One thing that's really cool in iOS 13 is that you can now have more granular control over which apps are accessing your location data. So no longer can an app request your data location permanently. Instead, you're actually gonna get periodic reminders that an app is using your location and then you're gonna be able to respond and say, actually, I don't want them to have that information or allow just this one time or only when I'm using the app. So this is great on the whole, but after a while, maybe you don't wanna see all those notifications. What you can do though is sort of beat those notifications to the punch by going into the settings and then just pre-selecting all the different location sharing that you want to see happen. So to get there, you wanna to go to settings and location services and from there, you can check out everything that you've already given permission to use your location and tweak it. Now, maybe you want this set up, and I think a lot of people will, to say, ask next time, because then the next time you can say, allow once. And that's probably a pretty decent way to handle this. Of course, my favorite is just while using the app, because if I'm using the app and it needs to know my location to be useful to me, I don't wanna have to mess with the permissions every single time, and that just works pretty good for me. Now, to be honest, you should probably be pretty conservative with using the always allow option because even apps that need your location data to run a complication on a companion app, right, for your Apple Watch, they only need it while it's open, while it's being used. So really, why do you even need to always allow an app to use your location data? I don't know. So I would say don't do it. The next thing that you want to check out is settings, privacy, Bluetooth. Why? Like, here, here's a scenario. So you're out and you're at the mall or something, and maybe some Bluetooth devices can interact with your phone to then serve up some sort of 
relevant ad to you. You don't want that. You don't want to be tracked. So in order to be able to turn that off or at least require permission before that can happen, this is where you would change that. Like Facebook is particularly annoying here. I don't use Facebook, but if you use Facebook, then you probably already had to grant it permission to use Bluetooth. So you can now go in and change that because you don't want that. Let's talk a little bit about Control Center because there's some cool new settings you can mess around with in Control Center. So if you swipe down from the top right corner of a newer iPhone, and Control Center happens a little bit differently on an older iPhone, not gonna explain all that right now, bring up Control Center, and let's talk about the Wi-Fi. Before, in iOS 12, if you wanted to switch networks, it was kind of a pain. You had to go into settings and actually look at the networks. Now, if you bring up Control Center and long press on the Wi-Fi option, and then long press again on the network that you're on, you'll get a list of networks, and you can switch around really easily which is pretty cool. So we already talked a little bit about light mode and dark mode in iOS 13. Well, in Control Center, you can actually really quickly change that without having to go to the settings. So what you do is bring up Control Center and there's a dedicated button there. And it's sort of like a circle within a circle and each of those circles is like half black, half white. And so you can just go ahead and change it right there. Or you long press on the brightness settings, the slider there that lets you change the brightness then you'll also get some really cool options. You'll get the dark mode button for on and off. You'll get night shift that you can turn on or off. And you'll also get true tone that you can turn on or off aside from adjusting the brightness. Basically the lesson is long press on everything in control center and see what all you can do. Something else up there in control center that you can do is mess with the timer and specifically how long it's gonna be anywhere from one minute all the way up to two hours. So usually if you just tap on the timer icon, it's gonna go to the timer. It's just like a shortcut. But if you long press on it, then you'll be able to get a slider and adjust it to whatever you want. It's really quick and easy. And I wish I had known about this sooner. Something else that's kind of cool on the security or privacy side of things is that now in iOS 13, you can change when Face ID or Touch ID is used, like for what. If you like it for unlocking your phone, but not for Apple Pay, or if you wanna reverse that and you want like the extra security maybe that comes with having to use a stronger passcode and you're worried that someone's gonna scan your face <laughs> to get into your phone, you can go in and change on a per use basis what applies when. So for instance, iPhone unlock, Apple Pay, in the App Store, or password autofill. So to change that, you wanna go to settings, face ID and passcode, or touch ID and passcode, and you'll be able to change all that stuff right in there. In the old days, you couldn't download huge apps if you were on a cell network versus a Wi-Fi network. It would give you a message that said, this is over 200 megs and you're not gonna be able to download it until you're on Wi-Fi. Well, now that's not the case. Uh, it's still gonna ask you if you still wanna download it if it's over 150 megs, I think, but you can go into settings and App Store and iTunes and disable that asking you anymore. It's kinda nice. But either way, whether it now asks you or you turn that off so that it doesn't, that limit has been removed. And I guess this is almost more of a tip than a setting, but in the Files app, you can now create local folders. You don't have to use the iCloud version of Files app anymore for all your folders. And the cool thing is that apps can now use those too. So that just got a lot more useful. It's sort of a setting because you make it happen the way that you want. So I don't know, there's probably more that we could dig into here. If you really want me to go even further and do like the Apple Watch video where I went step by step through all the different settings and showed you what I had in my preferences, let me know. I mean, we could definitely do that. But yeah, if I miss anything, if there's some really great settings that people need to know about, stick it down in the comments and let's make sure that everyone can find them down there. If you have some questions, let me know. Do not forget to follow at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K on Instagram and Twitter. And by the way, I have to let you know, the podcast is up and rolling now. We did two test episodes and now we actually uploaded the first real podcast episode. So the links to where you can find that are down below. Yes, it's gonna be uh, in Apple's podcast directory. We submitted it. Um, I expect it to be accepted like today or tomorrow. It's already in Spotify and you can just listen to it on the web too or download it to take with you as well. And you know what? We got a clips channel too and you should check that out as well. Someone was like, hey, how come you're doing like three minute videos? Well, I'm not really, but what we're doing is we're splitting up the long form content that we have into nice little easily digestible and searchable clips that live over on the clips channel. And so maybe you prefer that if 
you don't want to sit through like a 20 minute video, but you still want the goods, go check out the clips channel. So that is it for this video. And I will catch you guys in the next one later.